happy. You're welcome. I now remember why I really enjoy camping in the RV. Why is that? The best, most unlimited hot water when you take a shower. I had no hot water this morning. Oops. Hey, what's up family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com and that's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Welcome to day 16 of the Beef, Butter, Bacon and Egg Challenge. I will definitely say some days are better than others. Some Mondays are better than others and this Monday has a very beautiful view. I'm enjoying this. I do want to say, by the way, I am very sorry about the hot water. I, I was very insensitive saying that I had unlimited hot water because poor Rachel got up this morning <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to go. I feel dirty. I want to go take a shower. And I'm like, okay, oops, I forgot to turn on the hot water heater last night. It's just, you know, it's been a couple of months yeah. since we've been in the rig. And usually the first thing we do is turn on the electric hot water heater when we have electric. We're rusty. If we don't have electric, We've got a gas hot water heater, and then you only turn it on about 10 minutes before your shower. Well, the fuse was blown. So she took her shower, and I'm like, I guess the hot water heater is broken. So I took a cold shower. And she took a cold shower. And shaved my legs. And 75% of the way through her shower, I'm like, I wonder if there's a fuse outside. I checked the breaker. That was good. I'm like, I wonder if there's a fuse. And I go, and yeah, it was like a 10 cent fuse. <laughs> So I I fixed it. I had hot water. You can go take another shower if you want. I can. And you know what? The the thing for me was I want to get right out to the water immediately. I didn't want to wait. So I'm glad that I didn't because, you know, 10 or 15 more minutes would have been 10 or 15 more minutes not relaxing by the water. I am not going to want to go home tomorrow. Me neither. I mean, this this is, look at this. I mean, this is amazing. And you know, when we checked in, the ranger was like, only staying with us for a couple days, huh? She's like, usually people book this for 7 to 14 days. The max is 14 days. I'm like, I almost did. It was available for 8 days. And I almost was like, forget work, forget football. We're going to hang out at the Keys for a while. Yeah. Because this is amazing for just $36 a night. And Incredible. you get electric and you get water. I mean... You can hear, we it's apologize. Noisier. Our campsite is right below the Beyond the Bridge, so you do get some road noise. But I'll take the road noise to have this. We don't even have to go over to the sandy beach, though we probably will at some point. I mean, I'm looking down the row for these 10, 15 campsites that have, I think it's 10 camps, or 12 campsites that all are on the water. People are just chairs like this facing the water, fishing. There's people wading Snorkeling. out. There's a couple of scuba divers right over here under the bridge, probably looking for some lobster. Right over there, there's a bridge where you can go fishing underneath. So we didn't even have to go to the beach that's open to the public and deal with the parking. We get to sit right here. Well, and we're gonna have a nice uh, front row seat for when they blow the conks Yeah, well, later they blow today. them right over there. So we're just gonna walk under the bridge. We did miss it last night. So hopefully we can get it into the video here. We, we got here and by the time we were done setting up and we were so excited, I forgot to walk over there because you have to get there at sunset. So, you know, you can hear them in the video from yesterday, but you can't actually see the sunset because the best view of sunset's on the other side of the bridge. It really is. But this is one of those campsites and views that you're just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I can't believe we're here. And you're so excited you almost missed stuff. Yeah. So let's talk about the beef, butter, bacon, and egg. We are starting our day off with a cup of coffee. Each one of us has one tablespoon of egg, uh, one tablespoon of egg, one okay. tablespoon of butter. You measure that. And one egg. And please don't come at me. 
I know that you are not supposed to put hot liquids in a Ninja, but that's all I got. So I put it in there, blast it for just like one, two quick blasts, and then I slowly undo the top so that it doesn't explode. But Thanks I wouldn't put that. it in there for a long, long time because yeah, it, it could explode. So please don't do that at home. What is it? Do as I say, not as I do. Do do you do a different things at the campsite? Period. Yeah. Right. Like campsite. You know, even when the kids were camping, clean was very different in tent camping than it was when we got home. Right. right. It's just you have to do some things differently at the campsite. Okay. Sorry about that. There was a problem with the camera. I don't know if it got overheated or what. So you know, a lot of people do ask us, how do you do keto? when you go camping. And we get those questions both on the Keto channel as well as our camping channel, which if you didn't know, in addition to this Keto channel, we have another channel called Two Crazy Campers. Okay. And it's all about our RV life and going camping. We do campground reviews, we go tips. Like we have a video going up later today on how to empty your black tank Super at your fun. house. We have a video of Rachel emptying the black tank. You definitely want to go oh, check that no. out. I'm going to leave a link for that right over <laughs> her head. It's really funny. You definitely want to go watch that. But yeah, a lot of people ask us, how do you do keto camping? And honestly, I think it's easier to do keto camping than when you're at home. Oh my goodness. Yes, because camping lends itself to cooking on an open fire, right? right? I mean, steak and hot dogs on a stick and hamburgers. And you know, a lot of times when you're camping, you're trying to keep it simple, yeah. not having like a ton of extra sides. So you're you're super fine to be like, hey, for breakfast, we're doing a, a big mess of scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. a cup of coffee, and, and we're off ready to go have an adventure. So I think it also is easier to stay keto when you're camping because of the fact that you're like, I want to get busy doing this stuff. I'm not so concerned even yeah. with making sure that I have a whole bunch of variety of, you know, fun food because I want to get to the activities. You know, a lot of times when we do come camping, we kind of relax a little bit and we'll enjoy more keto brick than usual, or we'll have some high key cookies, or we'll have some Quest chips to it's make like a nacho kind of bowl. Um, and obviously we can't do it on this beef butter bacon and egg, but there's still beef jerky and pork rinds and things like that. But what I'm really interested to see is how we feel when we go home from this trip as to in the past, because normally in the past, as funny as this sounds, because you think of camping, it's supposed to be a vacation. And when you think about a vacation, you go home heavier. Right. But for us, normally when we go camping, we lose weight, we lose weight which is kind of odd but I think it's because we're doing things and, and we're maybe going hiking or going for long bike rides, things we don't do at home and we're not thinking about food as much, but you said something about stress as well. Yeah, I actually think that stress really shows up on the scale for me. Mm -hmm. So when we have an opportunity to relax like we do when we're camping, I just leave it all behind. Mm -hmm. I don't need to, to carry that stress anymore and it just, it shows up on the scale. Yeah, so I'm really excited to see what happens when we get home because if we normally lose weight when we come camping, and I know for a fact, though we haven't gotten on the scale, that I am losing weight or at least losing fat on beef, butter, bacon, egg because my shirts are getting huge. I know, you're gonna need a medium. I have all of these Life is Good shirts and I had bought a whole bunch of them that were on clearance and I bought all larges and now I feel like I'm swimming in them. Yeah. And I wanna get a bunch of mediums, but I don't wanna spend the money. I know, but you would tell Heath, if it's time to go down a size, go down it a size. It is time to go down a size. So yeah, I'm really excited to see that when you're eating the proper food while you're camping, does it go down even more? Do we go home feeling even looser clothes? Are our measurements really down? Now, I know you're gonna go premiere keto on the couch. Yes. So what we're gonna have for lunch today is, or for our food is, while you're doing that, I'm gonna run into town, I'm gonna get some bait so we can go fishing. Yay. I'm gonna look for some steaks and we're gonna have bacon and then when we come home, we're gonna make some bacon and eggs on the Blackstone. Nice. Before we go, I did want to say I really am sorry that I had hot water and you didn't. I should have sucked it up and taken a cold shower just like you. In solidarity. In solidarity. It's all right. But at least you got to take a shower because I was thinking that in a couple of weeks, 
we're actually going to be going tent camping. And there is no shower. And there is no shower, but we will be tent camping on a lake. So you can just go jump in the water. I will do that. So the only thing that I don't like about coming camping at the Ianda is if you wear Crocs, our campsites are pebbles and they keep getting caught underneath my shoes. Okay, I have to show you something. Okay. We had some steaks in the freezer from oh, the last wow. time we came down here in May and they're ribeyes. Okay. So take a look at how much we paid per pound in May for ribeye. $7.99. I just bought these like, and they were the thickest they had, these New York strips at the same Winn-Dixie. And look at how much we just paid. $13.99 a pound. The ribeye was $18.99 a pound. It literally went up $10 a pound since May. At the same exact Winn-Dixie here at the Ianda. Okay, I have a challenge for you. Okay. We have our Turbo Ant scooters with us. We do. They're supposed to go 30 miles. Yes, but we know we don't normally push it. No. Well, I think we should try to take them to the other side of the seven mile bridge. Aww. That would be about 15 miles round trip because you got the seven mile bridge plus, plus a little bit on this side and a little bit on the other side. There's a prize that we can do it. Well, this isn't gonna take any exercise. Like, that's super easy to do. Yeah, but we are risking the fact that if the battery runs dead, we, we would have to home. kick start it the rest of the way. Right. Just on the other side of the Seven Mile Bridge. Is what? Is that Porky's restaurant that has that pork belly. Oh! Which we can have on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Oh, wow. And if we go during happy hour, I gotta double check if they're still having it, but if I remember right, it was like $5. Okay, so the only thing we have to do is, because we can't have any of the dipping sauce or anything that comes with it, you have to somehow sneak in some of your mayonnaise. Oh, we can do that. I was gonna try to make some mayonnaise. If, you know, if we can go all the way, because here's the thing, there is a giant bridge on the Seven Mile Bridge where it goes way up high. Oh. And that might be pushing it where we'd have to kick it, but I think we should at least Let's like, try it. Go down the old Seven Mile Bridge, which goes about a third of the way across, and then it dead ends because they started tearing down the old bridge. Right. But I think it would be really cool because once we get outside of the park, we could launch the Skydio drone and have it follow us, and you could get like a really good view of the Florida Keys I would from the that. Seven Mile Bridge. So I don't have a drying rack here in the RV to be able to dry age these steaks with salt, like salt brining them. So here's what I did was I took some forks and I kind of jimmy rigged it and I poked them in the styrofoam and I'm going to place them like this. That'll allow the air to get underneath it, put them in the refrigerator and let it sit until we're ready to cook these for dinner. We have a neighbor that just pulled up. Look at this beautiful manatee. Hi friends. Well, hello, sweethearts. I hope you're having a good Monday. Will Joe notice if I swipe a piece of bacon? Let's see if he notices. Joe is cooking on the Blackstone. Um, excuse me. I'm missing some bacon. There was a heron in the area. Is there any chance you grab bacon? This park is amazing for bird watching, but you know, they do like meat. No, I counted, I knew exactly how many pieces. That that comes off of your allotment of bacon. That can't be true. It does. There you go, that one's yours, that one's mine. Hey, this is not equal to this. What do you mean it's not equal to this? I have like one piece of bacon. I took one. You, you have like five or six pieces of bacon over there. I think you took more than one. I did not. And then I brought it inside and I think you swiped some more when you went in to use the restroom. Can't be true. I think it is true. I knew how many pieces of bacon I made. Here you go. Now you have two and I have three. Okay. Okay, so just a little lunch the perfect egg you're right over over easy slash medium and some perfectly cooked bacon not overly cooked 
but not yucky bacon. I got to say, you might want to ab abandon the pork rind challenge. Why? Because wait until you see what's going on behind us in the water. It is an absolute aquarium. I'm seeing sheep's head and parrotfish and snapper of all sorts. Really? Uh-huh. We're going to put my... There we go. Yeah, I am going to go put on my long sleeve um, shirt. These things are great for sun protection. Because you forget when you're in the water, like how burnt you're getting. Yeah. So I still think we need to go for a scooter ride. That's for sure. Maybe not across the bridge. And I think we should get an appetizer tonight and go over and get some of that pork belly. It's only over on the other side of the bridge. I'm totally fine for it. But I'm telling you, as soon as you get in there, you're going to be like, what? I even like ran into a manatee. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so let's finish eating and I'm gonna go inflate the paddle boards. I have egg yolk all over my mustache. I'm gonna inflate the paddle boards. I think it's a little rough for us to be able to paddle, um, like standing up, because we we're still new to it, but we can sit. use it as like a kayak mm -hmm. and kind of like a sit down kind of kayak and just as a raft to kind of go around. Nothing brings more joy to my heart than watching Rachel relax. She is probably the hardest working woman I have ever met. The only person I know who works as hard as Rachel is my mom, but she's just nonstop. She's always going, going, going. And, you know, we don't get many opportunities to just do this kind of thing, to just sit back and not have any cares or anything. So I love being able to bring her down here to the Keys and just have her do the thing she loves the most, which is be on the water. Did you see some cool stuff? There is some cool fish down there. I saw some trigger fish, some angel fish. I probably sound like really weird because my mask is on. Look at your cute little hoodie. Gotta protect my head. Gotta protect Mr. Clean. So uh, I called Porky's and they're still having happy hour. If you've never been down here in Marathon, there's this place called Porky's Bayside Marina. They have really, really good food. We've they eaten do. there before. We actually vlogged about it. I'll leave a link for that over my head. And uh, they have a happy hour from 3 to 6 p.m. And one of the items on there is something we can eat in the middle of the beef, bacon, butter, and pork challenge pork and egg belly. challenge. Uh, it's pork belly. And it's $5 a basket. Hello. So what I'm thinking is... I get my own basket? Well, what I'm thinking is it's around 2.30 right now. Let's head on over there around 4 o'clock. It's just on the other side of the 7 Mile Bridge. So it takes like 10 minutes to get there. We'll get some pork belly and then bring it back to the campsite and then we'll have that along with our steak. What do I you like think? I like the way you think, sir. Yum. Too bad we can't have the sauce because the sauce, the sauce is like really time. good. Okay. So that's yours. Thank you. And when these are mine. I think we all know that that's not gonna happen. Why not? Because I can eat more than you. Let's get this garbage out of here. We don't want any of that stuff. <laughs> I'm sure we look really crazy as people just eating plates of pork belly. Like, it's supposed to be an appetizer, but... We're used to looking crazy. So I was gonna say, only we would come to the Keys and go to Bell's Outlet. It's so cheap here, though. But am I wrong in saying this is the nicest and the biggest Huge. Bell's Outlet you've ever seen? It's like super Walmart size. They've got, like, 250 pairs of men's shoes over there. The one by us, there's like six pair. Right. These things smell so good. Oh, I would like a purple knife because it matches my shirt and it actually matches Flip. Flip would also like a purple knife. I just took a shower, a hot one. Is that a dig on me? No, it was awesome. It sounds like a dig on me. One cold shower makes you appreciate hot showers. Okay. Ribeye. Ribeye. Now it feels like a fancy vacation. So we got ribeye, a little bit of our butter mayo. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. We had the same reaction. Mmm. So we went to uh, the store, we went and got our... Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we went and we got our 
uh, pork belly, which was like really good. Delicious. It was so funny. I like. The lady's like, anything else? Nope, just nope. the pork belly. Just three orders of pork belly. People are looking at us like, you realize that like one order is supposed to be for an entire table and you guys are eating one and a half orders each. each. Three pork bellies and two glasses of water. <laughs> we gave her a good tip at least because I felt bad. Yeah. We literally sat down there and spent $15. So, but it was really, really, really good. And uh, I forgot to get together all of the stuff on how much we spent last week because we were having so much fun in the water. I mean... We will get it together. I will get it together tomorrow when we get home. Yeah. Um, but we were just really enjoying, like, the swimming and the fish and the reeves, and I really did want to go get the pork belly. And then somehow we ended up at Bell's Outlet. I don't know how we ended up at Bell's Outlet, but we did. Right. You know what is my favorite part about relaxing? What? Seeing you relax. Wow. I love it. I love seeing you just snorkeling and it was just fun. I felt like a kid today. It was a lot of fun. I feel like we ate really well. I mean, we had eggs, we had bacon, we had pork belly. Ribeye. We're having a ribeye. This is the ribeye that I only paid $7.99 a pound for. And I remember paying $7.99 mm. a pound for it going, I feel like I'm spending a lot of money on that. Tastes like value. But uh, yeah, there ain't no such thing as a $7.99 ribeye anymore down here. So We're let us know. A dinosaur. What is the current cost of beef by you? I mean, for us here, ground beef is still really cheap at somewhere around $3 a pound. But even New York strips, which is what we bought there, and they're like, I put them in the freezer. They're like thin. They're like, right. okay, so if you look at this steak, those New York strips I bought are half the th the half the thickness of this. Right. And those were thirteen ninety nine a pound. The ribeyes were eighteen dollars a pound, and they weren't much thicker. So I'm curious, like, what are the beef prices around the country? Well, I'm going to enjoy this ribeye while we have it. Well, I guess we're going to end the vlog then. So if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos that we have linked right over here. Also, make sure you take a look at the most recent video, which I'm going to put right over there. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we eat fancy meat like ribeye, you'll be alerted to it. Till tomorrow. Bye. Bye.